George Washington's inaugural address was a, was a very short, direct statement almost. Um, he had originally worked with his former aide, David Humphreys, who was a writer of sorts and a poet, with a long, very lyrical address. Uh, but when he got to New York City, where he was to be sworn in, um, he met with, um, uh, he, he talked with the congressman there, particularly Congressman uh, James Madison, who was a very close friend, and he talked with him earlier in Mount Vernon about this. And he discarded the long address and instead worked with Madison to get a very short, direct address. Washington really wasn't a speaker. His false teeth had something to do with that. Um, he didn't feel comfortable speaking. In fact, um, he often talked almost in a very low voice, a hiss, because he, some would call it, um, because of his, um, his ill-fitting dentures. Uh, and he, his dignity came, well, John Adams once said that George Washington, who he considered the finest political actor he had ever seen, had the gift of silence. That is, his sheer dignity. He could stand there and convey uh, powerful emotions, basically turn a crowd with a nod or a glare or a look. And he had a power of force. So, so he brought that to the presidential inauguration. But he took this address that was brief, just took a few minutes actually to say, um, let, about 20 minutes. Um, and that's reading very slowly because I've read it over and usually I finish it in about um, 10, or, 10 or so minutes. So he was re reading very slowly if it took 20 minutes. But it did have some, some pithy lines. Um, it was an address not mainly meant for the audience, which was very small because they were in the Senate chambers and there was only the members of Congress and a few invited guests could, could hear it but it was immediately published in newspapers all across America and sent by the ministers from foreign countries back to their home countries to see what was being said about this new country and what America was all about. And, and there, there are a variety of lines in there where he calls on the help from, from God, where he, where he commits himself to service, admits his own um, inabilities to do this job, which of course was a tremendous un understatement. But he had one line that, that I wa just want to read to you now because I think it captures, it's certainly the most memorable line from this inaugural address. After expressing his trust in God and Congress to carry the nation forward, Washington reminded Americans of their national purpose. He, he said, he said, the preservation of the sacred fire of liberty and the destiny of the Republican model of government are justly considered as deeply and perhaps finally staked on the experiment entrusted to the hands of the American people. That is, he realized, and he was speaking out to the American people and to the people of Europe, who were then beginning to go, undergo Republican rev revolutions of their own, starting with the French Revolution, which was just beginning now just beginning at this time. So he was speaking to his own people and to Europe and saying, America has a special destiny here. As he, as he said, the sacred fires of liberty, the destiny of the Republican model of government, as opposed to the monarchical one, which was then dominant, or a tyrannical one, uh, which took place some places. He said, are justly considered as deeply and, note he said, perhaps finally staked on the success of this experiment. That is, the experiment under the Constitution to make a government work. There had been fears before the Constitution was drafted that the states were splitting apart, were breaking apart in their own separate confederations, were fighting with each other over economic matters and, and borders, and the whole experiment seemed to be collapsing. There was a thought that Spain would take over the West and England would come back, and, and the, thing, the whole experiment, as he called it, was going to collapse and with it, the ideal of Republican government. And he's saying, no, we've got to make this work. This Constitution is our last best chance to make this ideal, this possibility of Republican government on which he had staked his life and his fortune in the Revolutionary War. And so many of the people who were hearing him had done the same. That, that was staked on this and making it work, 
that's why he had come out of retirement from Mount Vernon. That's why he was back in New York, and that's why he was taking over the presidency, and that's the charge he was putting on the members of Congress, his incoming administration, and the American people.